Assalamu alaikum everybody. My name is Dr. Ahmed Abdurashid. Today I'm going to present the last chapter of the the last case of the, the chapter of the infectious disease and the, my topic will be genitourinary TB. My mediator will be Dr. Me. Our outline of today will, will be talking about will be the epidemiology of the genitourinary TB what will be the etiology cause, what is the renal tuber, uh, and then we will talk about the renal tuberculosis, then what is the causes, ureteric uh, tuberculosis and the bladder tuberculosis. First of all, we will start from the introduction. TB can affect any organ of the system, including genitourinary system. Untreated genitourinary TB can lead to irreversible tissue damage with serious consequences such as renal failure, infertility, making the clinical luxation very difficult to diagnose and then until it diagnosis very late. G2B, which is actually a county uh, 20 to 40 percent of the extrapulmonary tuberculosis, is the second most common site in the developing nations and the third most common site in the developing nations. It can affect 80 percent of the, uh, the kidney, which can lead to hematogenous spread. Then the second organ which can affect is epididymitis, then testis, and then bladder, and the ureter, and the prostate are the least most common that ureter can be affected. TB etiology. TB is caused by a group of the closely related uh, I said, uh, fast bacilli referred to mycobacterium tuberculosis complex. This complex includes a species that can cause only humans, such as mycobacterium tuberculosis and mycobacterium africanum. By far the most frequently isolated species in the human TB, human TB worldwide is mycobacterium tuberculosis, which followed by mycobacterium bovis. The lo local geographical different exists. For example, Mycobacterium africanum is more common for the West African countries in 40 percentage. And the transmission of the, and the pathogenesis of the uh, urinary tuberculosis, firstly, the, the primary food will be the lungs, which actually and stays for long term and then becomes active. Then. And it can be transmitted for, to the aerosol with the, for the infected person. And then it, it reaches to the uh, regional lymph nodes and then gastrointestinal through thoracic duct. And then it can also transmit it for roots. Either it could be hematogenous spread, the, which is the most common cause, or retrograde, such as patients who are receiving the BCG, or direct inoculation if there is a fistula between the uh, general urine tract into the intraphysical fistula, which can lead to sepsis. The sign and symptoms Amen. of the germ three. Amen. Wait. I would like Dr. Sunil to please, uh, can you comment uh, something of some points? Can you add to uh, about the mode of transmission or how can you prevent it in the environment like we are having in Pakistan? To, actually, if we uh, uh, look at this, uh, actually very good algorithm, most common source of uh, is what we acquire during our childhood is through, uh, we all exposed to tuberculosis and then it got inoculated into our hyalur uh, uh, nodes and then it's, there is hematogenous spread. This, then the tuberculosis basically deposit in every organ of our body. Then later in the years, depending upon local immunity downgrading, it occurs from any site actually. For example, patient present with GUTB doesn't mean patient does not have tuberculous bacilli present in the brain. It may be present in the brain because it is spread through hematogenous spread. Uh, direct inoculation is very rare because usually uh, it don't survive much on um, skin surface and through enterocutaneous fistula, it's very, uh, maybe some case reports through that. But in our setup, it's very difficult to avoid exposure to tuberculosis during our uh, childhood or adolescent when we are exposed to, uh, particularly living in uh, uh, Karachi setting or in a basically settings where there is a close just like this room, if somebody with tuberculosis cough in this room, it will spread in whole room and anyone can basically basically inhale it and then it goes to respiratory and we all got exposed to that. That's why when we go to diagnosis, uh, we don't diagnose for tests which are good for latent tuberculosis because we all have latent tuberculosis during our childhood or adolescence. 
अब नाउ अब इम्यूनिटी कैन बी गुड देन वी कैन प्रिवेंट इट फ्रॉम अकरिंग ओवरऑल इम्यूनिटी अदरवाइज बेसिकली वी कांट फ्रॉम प्रिवेंशन पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू थैंक यू Okay, sir. thank you very much. The clinical manifestation and the pathological features. Signs and symptoms of the genitourinary TB are non-specific, and the patients are often treated to the other bacterial infections misdiagnosed. Uh, later will be evaluated at the end of the uh, when there is no other option. Is then later will be diagnosed for the TB. Symptoms can correlate with the severity and the location of the disease. The typical uh, TB constitutional symptoms such as fever, weight loss, night sweat, malaise are present in fewer than twenty uh, percent. That's why it's very difficult to diagnose it unless it's diagnosed later on. Dysuria can present only fifty percent of the uh, patient storage symptoms such as uh, frequency, nocturia. Uh, urgency it present only 50% of the patient and the hemorrhagia and the flank pain it can present only 33% and renal colic sometimes is the most rare finding 10% the laboratory finding include the sterile biuria and or sometimes the patient will present for the hemorrhagia this combination is found in more than 90% of the genital urinary tb in the following countries and the most common side now we will talk about the renal tuberculosis in 80% of the genital urinary tb occurs in the kidney it is a progressive and highly destructive over time the pathological finding of the kidney fry great and depend on the severity of the disease and the more common in the pulmonary tb or the patient who are already immunocompromised such as renal failure patient when the, uh, the tb is actually uh, involved in multiple organs is called miliary tb it is high it has also high mortality rate the kidney if the miller can be found is standing in the, the renal cortex and medulla but does not usually affect the renal function when the, the kidney is more localized infection of the kidney the tubercle by, uh, bacilli becomes large fast in the pre glomerular capillaries and then it will form a granuloma which is in the renal tubercles which causes in cascading at the end it causes cavity uh, necrosis of the material form which result in the frank collapses chronic pyelonephritis bronchial and babular necrosis and the sinus tract may emerge along with this Uh, sinus. An examination, if you examine this patient, you may find the costovertebral angle tenderness. As the infection advances, the calcius becomes inflamed, eventually calcified, and the later on will cause a calcial distortion, dilatation, and the stenosis of the calcial system. When the enough disease progression, the kidney becomes non-functional. This is uh, a scenario is called autonephrectomy which is only present in 33% of the uh, genital urinary tb and it has two parts the first part is called a uh, cassio cavernous step in which invariable tissue is replaced by granuloma and cavity is filled with inflammatory oxalate which is actually associated with or without calcification and the, the second part is called fibrotic which is severe scarring or calcification resulting in shrinking kidney at the end end stage renal failure patient develop approximately 20 percentage of the cases and the chronic inflammation may lead to squamous metabolism late in the pelvis which persist after treatment and both in risk for the squamous cell carcinoma how we diagnose for the uh, genital urinary tb either we can diagnose culture nucleic acid amplification histopathological or screening test culture is the gold standard for the genital urinary tb 3 to 5 urine samples for the consecutive days should be collected for the maximum days and the early morning is the most important sample the sensitivity is 80 to 90 percentage and then we can go for the screening test which is actually tuberculin screen test in which in protein provide test injected to the patient to the dermis and then Uh, which goes in duration after the 72 hours and when we can categorize for the three uh, uh, three uh, three people uh, three family if the duration as actually 5 to 9 mm positive is the person is category one which actually is history of the latency those patient who has actually 10 to 15 mm positive the person category be those who actually immigrant from the epidemic areas uh this category this one and if the patient has more than 15 mm positive is this one is included for the general public
and the interferon gamma release assay we can use also, which is actually uh, for the blood test and most commonly used. Wait, I would like to ask Dr. Sneen that we are going for tuberculin test in every patient. What is the sensitivity and specificity? Like in nowadays, uh, we know that it's ideal to go for the culture. But we are still performing this tuberculin test. Actually, uh, this screening test, actually, uh, uh, just like I told before, because this shows just ke whether I'm exposed to tuberculosis or not. Actually, there is no role of these tests for the diagnosis of uh, uh, tuberculosis, actually. Uh, some, uh, so in endemic countries, those who are in non-endemic countries, for them, this test is very important because they are not exposed to tuberculosis much. So anyone who is exposed to tuberculosis may have got this positive and actually it's supposed to diagnosis of uh, uh, tuberculosis. Should we perform it in Pakistan like we are all exposed? Huh. So, uh, my answer would be no. Because uh, even if it's positive, it won't help us. Even if it's negative, it won't help. But when you do a diagnostic test, there are two purposes. One is whether that test has a good negative predictive value. For example, if we do it, if it's negative, it rules out that thing. So, its negative predictive value again is very poor. Or hardly 10% or even more that. This means that doing this test and coming negative won't rule out tuberculosis. Second purpose of doing tests is what's the positive predictive value. The positive predictive value is again around 40-45%, which is in your clinical domain is more important than doing this test. So that's why these tests are not much helpful in our setup because these won't include or exclude tuberculosis actually. Uh, at our own institute, we try to do this IGRA release because theoretically it's much better than TST in patients with suspected abdominal tuberculosis in our, with our GI team, uh, in which uh, there are, we performed it in patients who are abdominal uh, intestinal tuberculosis, having uh, thickening of uh, intestinal wall or peritoneal, peritoneal uh, lymph nodes. We did that and we did laparoscopic and tried to rule out. So after I think around 50 cases, uh, those who are negative, they have tuberculosis and those who are positive in them, the alternate diagnosis came up. So basically that the take home message is that this, these tests are not good tests for diagnosis in our setup in, endem in any TB endemic country. Uh, Contiferon uh, is IGRA is better than TST, but again in TB endemic country, it won't help us. Uh, there are two types of IGRA release tests. Uh, both are available in Pakistan. Uh, one is Contiferon or uh, yeah, uh, this, the second is T-spot test. Some, some studies from Western literature is T-spot test is better than Contiferon, but these two both are better than TST. But doing it in endemic country, for example, some of you may know your own uh, friends who are flying to uh, UK for a job or something and their Contifron comes positive. They are asymptomatic, they are doing jobs. So uh, this just, just shows whether we have latent tuberculosis or not, which is not important in endemic country and we don't treat them. It's, it's better than TST, uh, but in uh, basically setups where the TB is not endemic. Sir, I would like to ask you, what about those patients who uh, who give a history of tuberculosis? They have they have received DDT, but they have come to us with the general urinary complications, for example, a small bladder. Or yeah, but at that time we are also performing uh, uh, the urine sample test for AFB, but that sometimes they come out to be negative. So there's a dormant phase and there's an active phase. So uh, do you think uh, should we actually proceed with the investigations? if he gives an history of uh, tuberculosis and the test because uh, uh, or does he require treatment if the test is uh, positive so uh, is yet to complete his actually diagnostic slides like if you go back one slide Amit, this is gold standard performing culture and culture is not uh, you cannot say any standard culture there tb there's a famous saying that TB is a test. We can do, don't have any blood test, but we can diagnose TB. So when you're suspecting a TB, GUTB, you need to sample from there. Sending urine for AV smear won't help us. The sensitivity and specificity of AV smear is hardly 20%. Sending it for 
uh, basically i am disclosing the slides of amit uh, nucleic acid amplification which is gene expert which is available it slightly better uh, towards 50 60 this is gold standard sending a urine for tb culture and sending it for 3 days and if the microbiological lab applies then your sensitivity of or then it takes time because the tb cultures uh in on classical lovisian johnson medium uh grows in at least 6 weeks at least and finals after at least 8 weeks of inoculation they say that this urine culture is no growth uh at siut uh, we have another medium of doing it uh, is liquid medium uh, that's a solid medium liquid medium is midget we do it at siut uh, that's slightly better because it in, in that case the growth comes in 2 weeks and basically then you apply sensitivity by 4 weeks you can have also sensitivity but we don't apply it in urine because in urine the uh, yield is very poor and we have uh, the chances of contamination is more and in the urine there are so many pathogens present so we usually uh, don't do uh, midget culture in urine but at least when you are sending it for patients while you are working it work, working with non functioning kidney or usually uh, that's what when we go forward when we discuss with okay, when you suspect utb in your patients usually what i saw it okay, when there is a bladder complication in kidney we usually don't uh, uh, think about that and again i was thinking just okay, when he say okay, the utb is very common I, I can ask my seniors. Okay, uh, what's what percentage of TB comes from? For example, if we do hundred nephrectomies, how many of them comes positive for TB? I think it's rare. It's 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 not uh, so common. It's rare. Maybe one. Uh, is some other causes for GUTB. The same goes with bladder biopsy. When we do bladder biopsy, it's a lower. I think less than one percent would be GUTB. So clinical suspicion. The problem with the trial by urea is is not a very good method of diagnosing. So keeping your clinical suspicion high, sending it, and one more thing, basically, which we can do as a practice uh, that, that won't harm us much. Okay, when we do any biopsy, particularly when we are doing nephrectomy, send a small chunk in normal line for TB culture. It won't cost us much, like and it may cut the yield better because sometimes what happens when the biopsy come as chronic casualty granuloma? Now what to do? We got confused. Okay, or there's just granuloma, no casualty, then we got confused. So sending it upfront will help us because once it put in formalin, we can't do culture. so through that we can uh, better yield our uh, diagnosis of gutb ha huh, early morning dr sunil why we do the, this culture on three consecutive days what the fuck and uh, uh, the release of avs in urine is not constant actually so we try to concentrate in the morning and uh, it just better the heal actually that's also with the sputum because when patient is throwing up sputum it may not come from that area where the tuberculosis is sitting the same goes with actually uh, uh, gutb uh, dr usman it's it's intermittent baciliuria therefore we sent uh, five uh, as he said it's preferable five so it's it's intermittent baciliuria bacilli tb bacilli comes intermittently in the urine it's not constantly therefore we send more for the good year thank you right, sir okay thank you sir is to pathology uh, when the culture is negative is to pathology can be helpful caseating uh, granuloma on a appropriate clinical contact can help to establish diagnosis of the genital urinary tb we can also perform nucleic acid amplification test which actually causes speed detection of the tb providing result within one or two days an a detection on in patient with low bacillary load it has low sensitivity in genital urinary tb and can be as adjunct to not to replacement of the culture for the diagnosis culture is the gold standard of the diagnosis of the tb now imagine we can use x ray ifb ct urogram ultrasound rbg or atg if we talk about the blend radiography what we can see blend radiography mostly is a calcification in more than 4 50% of the patient initial renal lesion faint bacteria and calcification in the parenchyma at the end stage of the renal tb small shrinking calcified casement called bath kidneys can be seen also the 
All the patients being evaluated for the genital urinary TB should also have just a history to exclude concomitant of the infectious preliminary TB. This point is very important. IVB, the gold standard of the imaging of the early renal TB. It has ero uh, initial erotive changes of the urethelium uh, appear, loss of the sharpness, and edge of the irregular of the calcial erosions have called nothing appearance. Filling defect is also seen, usually caused by tuberculoma, rupturing into the calcis and liability necrosis. Uh, it can also dem uh, demonstrate medullary cavities that communicate with the collecting system. When the class is an infidibulum is stenosis, the contrast excretion of the renal brinchema may fail, creating infantum calyx, which is this. The most common finding of the IVB is, however, is that, uh, whether they are obstructing changes resulting in scarring or distortion of the collecting system. The classical obliteration, infantibular narrowing, hydrocalcinosis, calcinosis, segment, or total hydronephrosis, or hydrourethro, all can be diagnosed to the IVB. CT scan uh, more sensitive than KUB in detecting calcification and thickening of the collecting system. And it has particular useful for evaluation patient who has complicated and extensive TB. But in Africa, SWAS abscess can also seen. If there is calcification in the vertebral quorum, liver also can be seen for the CT scan. Uh, retrograde uh, biography, antigrade biography. This test actually we can use for the, those patients who has uh, renal insufficient or contrast allergy. And they are helpful for delineating and distortion of the genitourinary anatomy. And also can be used for the conjunction of the IVU for determine whether cavitation of uh, obstructing or non-obstructing, whether they are communicating with the urinary collection system or not. Ultrasound has a limited role for the diagnosis of the genitourinary TB. It's only useful for the pediatric or permanent patient, which those we don't have to give for the contrast. And also, it has very important role for to follow patients who are already receiving for medical treatment to follow hydronephrosis because fibrosis during the healing can also worsen during urinary obstruction. So we can give this patient for the ultrasound. Treatment for the renal TB. Genitourinary TB can successfully treat with the standard short course of the six-month regime fasciline anti-tuberculosis drugs. The treatment begins with the intensive phase for two months of the daily acinacidrifampicin and bersimilimate, which actually targets rapidly multiplying bacteria. And the second phase, which follows is continuation phase for four months, which you have to give for the acinacid and rifampicin, given daily, alternatively, or thrice per week which attempted to eradicate the slow, sporadic, multiplier, and persistent bacteria. This table will illustrate more for the acinacid rifampicin, what time you give, what will be for the side effect mainly. For example, for patients who are actually having acinacid, most common side effect will be peripheral neuropathy. And it's told which is actually most important. You, we have to take care for the patient who actually renal failure patient because it is created for the renal. And also, it has a very severe side effect, which causes uh, visual acute, which is uh, unbearable for the uh, blind scan cause. Optic neuritis also can cause. The second line agent can also be used when the brief is the first line agent becomes. The, patient, the second line agents are safe for the patient who experiences side effect from the first line agents. Who's, Tuberculosis organisms exhibit direct resistance or in whom fast line target agent fails. This is the second line agent which you can add for the streptomycin, amikacin, uh, lipofloxacin, moxifloxacin, lincinacid, we also we can add for them. This point I will ask Dr. Usmir to make the details here. Treatment. Classically, we uh, treat uh, that same way, 2-H-R-Z-E, method two months of four drugs followed by four months of H-R. This intermittent thrice weekly is not recommended for endemic countries, actually. It, promote, it may promote the resistance, and um, basically this is for developed countries where the TB is not endemic, actually. For thus, daily should be given, and depending upon creatine clearance, we can modify the thambitol and PZA. Uh, 
just again highlighting the importance of culture not from GUTV point of view because we don't see much culture positive from the urine specimens basically again the yield is poor but from pulmonary point of view and other specimens point of view in Pakistan currently is uh, uh, from INH resistance point of view our INH resistance is around 10% as a nation and our MDR TB is uh, 4.3%. This means of every 100, 5, 4 or 5 KB MDR. The problem is if we don't have culture upfront and we put patients on 4 HRZ, patient is going to improve because patients, even if INH is not working, other three drugs are working, patient will improve. But once we patient put patient on continuation phase, patient may lose weight because INH is resistant and rifampicin, maybe the monotherapy which is going on and it induces resistance to that during therapy. So that's just to highlight the importance of INH. When you have culture upfront, then you have no okay, whether the patient is INH resistance or not. At SIUT, our INH resistance is around 7%. Again, this, that's actually all the specimens. Uh, so uh, we should try to get a culture because then we have DSTs available. When we have drug susceptible, we can modify our treatment of that. Uh, Luckily, uh, usually our GUTB patients are not renal failure patients, so we don't encounter that much side effect to add that actually. Like in side effect patients, we may stuck, particularly in transplant patient, we go for that second line list uh, because that patient may develop hepatotoxicity and we have to see kidneys. So lots of second line agents we use in our clinical practice also. But uh, one thing which should, we should know actually, the second lines are second lines. This means they are not a good drugs as I did tuberculosis, I mean, that's why they are not in first line. So we should try every efforts to give first line therapy upfront. The second treatment will be surgical treatment. About 55% of the patient with genital urinary TB require surgical management during their course. An intervention is more frequent as the disease advance, which actually we perform to relieve urinary obstruction or to drain infected material or to remove non-functioning kidney, in which causes resistance for the medical treatment, which are very resistant for the hypertension to the secondary for non-functioning excluded kidney, or to reconstruct the urinary tract. So all these conditions we can offer the patient for surgical therapy. Uh, procedures to relieve obstruction, mostly the patient already uremia or sepsis, we can offer him for the BCN or DJ stunting to relieve the obstruction. And nephrectomy is roughly performs 27% of the genetic urinary TB in the uh, consultation. The first patient who actually non function in kidney who are reluctant for the uh, recurrent TB despite optical medical treatment. After nephrectomy, all these patients, the, the relapse rate will be less than 1% have uh, been reported of the short course medical treatment. The second setting will be those patients who actually we are considering non functional kidney and medically resistant to hypertension, which hypertension will improve around 65% of this case patient. So now we are talking uh, about. My question is from Dr. Sunil that uh, uh, when we don't go for the nephrectomy, I read that uh, uh, we should follow the patient for next 10 years because there is a common, uh, there is a chance of relapse. So what should we do? Like I read that there is a, uh, we should perform PCR uh, six to uh, 12 months. You can perform it every yearly, yearly you can perform it. So we should do it here or not? Basically problem with gene expert or PCR is that it don't differentiate between live and dead actually. Uh, that's uh, problematic for us when we do in the cases which are uh, relapsed TB or Reinfection TB. Uh, just take example of the scenario which I was discussing. Patient having TB lymphadenitis. At that time, that occurs because of hematogenous spread in kidney. The goes your um, uh, tuberculous material, tuberculous bacilli. After 10 years, you do nephrectomy. We do PCR. PCR can come positive because it may be a dead genetic material present there, which just the lab is amplifying. So this is again a limitation of doing gene expert as a follow-up. As a follow-up, we can only do two things. One is AV smear, which somehow gives in pulmonary, it's more important because it's somehow we can differentiate whether the, that AV is broken or normal one. The lab can tell you this is broken AV. This means a past TB or patient has not alive. And second is culture. So doing culture, 
uh, that. So uh, not doing nephrectomy, probably the relapse would not from that kidney patient because already there is 19% and that's actually roughly figure 19% chance of having relapse of TB uh, from a if patient has already a tuberculosis. So from uh, not removing that kidney, patient completed short course of therapy, I think uh, that would not be a risk of uh, relapse of TB from that point of view. This can occur, hypertension and these kinds of things, like in, from TB point of view, it won't be a mode matter. Now we'll talk about for the ureteric tuberculosis, which can occur any part of the ureter. It's the most common for the distal part of the ureter, and then second will be UBG. Up to 50% of the patient who has renal TB have also ureteric involvement. And as the bacilli bacilli, Ureteric uh, tuberculosis as the bacilli passes in the urine through the ureter, granulomas can form along the walls. Uh, so also, also there is an infected calculi which can descend and load in the ureter. The ensuing inflammation leads to the scarring and structure commonly, which is more common in the distal end of the ureter, which at the end causes physical ureteral ejection. Structures can also occur through all the ureter, which actually x or IVUB, you can see the burn ureteral version leading to the beaded skull appearance. When the ureter is distorted from the scarring or obstruction or urinary reflux can develop, urinary obstruction resulting from the structure is important cause of the renal failure in genital urinary TB. This important this node is very important. We also we have to all consider the patient here to put it for the PCN or uh, DJ stunting to relieve the obstruction so we can save the kidney. Diagnosis are same as the kidney culture is the gold standard as the ureter uh, genital urinary TB is uh, ureteric TB is more commonly from the, the kidney. Radiological classification, um, uh, radiology actually will show ureteral classification, which is more common interluminal. So to differentiate, show a new moment, show, uh, show us you know, parasite, so which is more common for the extraluminal. The ureteric TB can manifest as in IVB, as the rigid calcified straightened pep stain ureter that is a tubular and lacks normal peristaltic activity which is always in the diagram below, paper like stain. It may also take the appearance of the bedded cox screw as a result of the nodular fibrosis along the entire urethra. Urethral cycle general obstruction is caused by tuberculosis cystitis or structure of the distal end of the ureter. And the cystoscopy is also another very important diagnosis, which you can see for the patient who has ureteric ureteric TB for the goal of all ureteric orifice. Surgically, you can offer for the patient for the ureteric uh, ureteral TB uh, structure, uh, which is called ureteropelvic or ureteral surgery. Structures or ureter may be temporarily sent to allow the improvement of the renal function before definitive management. Upper and middle ureteric structures are rare, so we can be managed for the in the urological treatment. Whereas the large uh, distal part of the ureter are the more common structures are more common, which is required for the open intervention. So we have to do for the complete excision of the structure. A patient who has good bladder capacity, we can perform for the swassage or buriflap. So as H can be performed, can cover a um, structure around 5 to 10 centimeters, whereas buriflap, it can cover from the 10 to 15 centimeter structures. But experienced surgeon is necessary. Otherwise, later on, poor performance surgery can cause devastating and more complicated um, complications. So we come for the bladder tuberculosis, which is more common in our setup in patient It also is descending infection to the bladder, usually begins near ureteric orifice and spreads along the lymphatic to the, area, to the other area. Similar to the TB in the ureter, bacilli implant in the urethelium and can cause a patch cystitis. Ulceration may develop in the area where large granuloma colosis. The doom of the bladder is the most common affected, whereas the trigone and the neck are remain normal. 
the mucosal inflammation for ability hematuria follow after approximately a year of the chronic inflammation mucosal scarring blood contraction develops when the urinary frequency urgency pain dysuria becomes prominent when blood capacity shrinks less than 100 ml the severity of the contracted temple bladder typically are the capacity when the less than 20 ml this is picture shows blood small capacity blood less than 20 ml in classical sign contractile temple bladder typically has capacity of the less than 20 ml Diagnosed the same as kidney of the ureter, more in the ureter. Blood, uh, plain X-ray can show classification is not very common except in the late cases of the bladder contraction. Cystoscopy and ureteroscopy. Endoscopically, plays a limited role in the diagnosis of the TB, but it allows direct visualization of the lesion. Finding can be non-specific. The cystoscopy, which causes local hebremia, mucosal er er erosion, as we can see for this picture, and the laceration, and there is a granuloma, masses, and irregularity of the ureteric orifice. Ulcerative lesion is my mimic the malignant. Uh, my, malig uh, my mimic for the malignancy. So, if you are suspecting for the any malignancy, biopsy is the best. Although positive urine culture for the Metabolic tuberculosis, tuberculosis is sufficient for the diagnosis. Result may not be available quickly enough. Furthermore, in those patients who have negative urine culture, bladder biopsy can be positive in 19 to 25 percent of the TP. Bladder surgery, which is actually very important, we can offer the patient who has timber bladder or small contraction bladder less than 100 ml, or who has very severely symptoms augmentation cystoblast or bladder substitution are options in the management of the uh, bladder contraction augmentation is indicated when the frequency nocturia urgent pain hematuria becomes intolerable typically when the bladder capacity is less than 100 ml for severely contracted bladder ileocecal or uh, sigmoid segment are the most suitable when only half of the bladder is diseased and the ileum is often used. This is the conclusion of the, my presentation today. Thank you very much Thanks. for your listening and your time. I hope you will get more information for this topic. Thank you very much for your time.